See, this is all our country, this, all of this, all this range. See that? That's all our country. Back there, clear up to the top. Everything you see is our sheep range. That was That's put together by a Basque sheep herder. My father, he came here at 16 years old from the Basque country in France. I worked eight years in Nevada and four years in Utah. Bought a little bunch of sheep and started that way, little by little. It's an American success story. <laughs> Yeah. What, year, what year did he come over here? 1929. Wow. Yep. So he came over because... Uh, Opportunity. Like... About a thousand, thousands and thousands and thousands of acres here. This is huge. I want to qualify that. We have the grazing rights, not own it though, per se. We have the permits. We picked them up years ago. My dad got them and then I acquired some sense. No one else can run sheep or cattle on my permits, but as far as anyone else, they're public. It's public domain. But all this lower stuff is private. That was broken out back at the late 1800s. That's, that, that's when they, how they, uh, they planted this, the West. Just a minute here, I'm gonna look back there, see if I see my guy with those sheep. Okay. Maybe way, way, way back up in that. And they spot them. They're just feeding. So will they stay up there? They'll bring them down slow, slow, uh, in, 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 in a few days. They're grazing there and he just goes behind them and then he kind of pushes them into the area that he would want them. The word herding, he's herding. I'm going up here to basically service these sheep herders, take them uh, groceries and uh, see what's going on. This is another sheep outfit. Their camps, their sheep camps are mobile, they're on trailers, and then uh, I'll move them around from location to location to where they are. And it's big, big distances sometimes. This one's really out here. Oh, he's waiting. We're not even halfway there yet. You're kidding. So how many sheep camps do you have? There are eight, eight different bands, and I've got about 10 men with them. See, our country goes clear up to that peak back there, as far as you can see. So you have sheep up there? Not yet, they're gonna be. This band we're going to right now will be up there in about 10 days. This will be rough, so hold on. My father, back in the, when he came to the country, that time there was a big migration anyway, a Basque people from the Pyrenees, from both sides of the, the border, you might say, and from Spain and France, coming here to the United States to work in the sheep business. It was way different then. He came at 16 years old and he used to tell me there were close to 100 million, 100 million people and 55 million sheep. At that time, it was open range, what they say. You could go anywhere, it was free. You could go anywhere. And, and then it became uh, allotted, allotments, government involved. Okay. And and actually it's better because they were, there were too many animals for... Overgrazing? Yeah. These are quake and aspen trees. That's a Beautiful. typical tree of the west, this part of the west. And then your pine trees, of course. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting close now. The, you'll see a typical sheep camp, what we call sheep camps. Sure. Some places they call them sheep wagons. It just depends on where you're from and what you grew up calling it, but there we are. My father, well, he didn't even have a horse in that, that area. They had a, a burrow that had all of your possessions on that burrow's back. When you moved from one spot to the other, it was your bedroll, your pots and pans, the food that you took, everything was strapped onto that burrow. They just followed the sheep. That was the way he lived for eight years. Okay. Yeah, if they're not there, they'll have a note for me or whatever, and then I'll uh, I'll come back in a couple days. Okay. Excuse me. They make a list. I just bring them whatever they ask. We even eat pork. 
<laughs> this this time I, I brought them pork. Is there a refrigerator? No, no refrigerator. Cooler. They got a cooler. There's no refrigeration here. Yeah, that's a table. It's all compact. It's all designed for compact use and for sturdy. So he has all the kitchen stuff in there. Oh yeah. Okay. All of the uh -huh. kitchen area? Yeah. It's a great stove. Oh yeah. So the top's for cooking and the bottom's for heat? Well, he, they can cook in this too. Yeah, it's got a little oven and whatnot. That's great. Yeah. They're heavy. They're, that's a, uh, they use that more in the winter when it's cold. See, they got uh, propane. There's a propane tank right here. Yeah. It's a lot more modern than what my father had, I'll tell you right now. He had a Dutch oven. Did he live in the same type of... Oh, no, no. Tent. My dad was out there for eight years without hardly going to town. He went to town maybe for a couple of weeks in the fall to like go to the dentist or... But other than that, no. Those old boys, they stayed right out there. He said the first year when he came, he was kind of homesick and that, and he, when he was 16, and he said he'd go quite a ways to go talk to another sheep herder. And he said after the second year, he said he wouldn't go. He said, you just got used to it. Uh, he said if it was handy, you bet. But they typically didn't intermingle very much because they were too busy with their own thing. What are these pans for? Washing uh, dishes and uh, like that. And they wash their clothes down in the creek, probably. With a, they take one of these tubs or something and put soap in it. He's out here for months, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I see him all the time, though. Not very sophisticated, but it works. See, I mean, we've had plenty of experience. This has got to work. You know, it's not, it's not uh, weekend uh, lightweight stuff. This is year-round utility. Okay, next stop. The street, it was really wasn't anything special. They actually raised the street, so it was more like a plaza that you would see in the Basque Country, or in Spain as well. And they put the design in it, so they have these little diamond type designs, as well as Laubudus, which is a Basque symbol. They call it a Basque cross. On this block, historically, this is where most of the um, boarding houses, there was a huge chunk of boarding houses just on this street and kind of the next block. The go check right if a person was immigrating over to the United States, to Boise, for example, they'd get off the train just a few blocks from here, actually, and come to a boarding house. In that intersection, each corner was a boarding house. <laughs> there were something like 45 or 50 boarding houses in Boise during that 30 or 40 year period. Originally, there, were, there was a chunk of people from the Basque Country that immigrated over in the mid-1800s for the gold rush and like a lot of people during that era were not successful <laughs> in finding gold, so then found whatever other jobs they could. So for them it was sheep herding, and there was a big group in the 1900s that came over for that, because they heard from somebody who had been here already. Boise has the highest concentration of Basques outside the Basque country. You guys are ready. Give me a couple minutes. <laughs> this is gonna be paella when we're all finished. National dish of Spain. We do it on Wednesdays and Fridays at noon and Thursday nights at six o'clock every week. Summer, winter, snow, rain. We're always making paella. We're here for, You're, for you. Perfect. Yeah. We've got to be getting close to 12. Yeah? Wow, all of you guys? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> all four of my grandparents are 100% Basque. The picture right there, that's my grandfather, my dad's dad. So he came over when he was 16 by himself. He was the oldest male, two days of American school, and then he was given sheep and told where to go. And a lot of the bass made, did that. They were sheep herders. They didn't own the sheep. There was like one owner and he would own thousands of sheep and they would get Basque workers to come in. I think because they didn't have to know the language, they were willing to work. All of my grandparents, you know, same, same kind of basic story. They all 
ended up here, married here, each other. I don't know, some of it like anyone. You're growing up and you don't even know that you're doing it. I was in the, was in the Bass Dancers. I wasn't thinking, oh, I've got to save the culture. I was doing it because I was having fun and you know, that kind of thing. My wife is from Nebraska, didn't know what a bass was and was drugged to a bass dance. She went to a sheep herder's ball and that's where we met and, and now she's stuck here. <laughs> we laughed that, was it a kind of fish? I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure what a bass is. Just you moved to Boise and the bass culture is so prominent here that you, you quickly learn what it is. So the map is of Iberian Peninsula. You've got Portugal over here, Spain, the dotted line up at the top separates France from Spain, and then that red kind of heart-shaped outline is the Basque country. The Basque country is very small. It would actually fit into Idaho's largest county. So therefore, we encompass the entire Iberian Peninsula. We even have the Busco label, certified Basque. So like you talk to Tony outside making paella, paella is the national dish of Spain. It's not a Basque dish at all, but we've just become very well known for it. Then inside we have our pincho suar. So pinchos is the Basque word for tapas or snacks. Here everything's priced by the toothpick. You just kind of take what you like, save your toothpicks, and we charge you at the end when you bring up your, your toothpicks to the counter. This is like paella, right? It is paella, yes. Is paella. Yes. Whoa, good catch. You know, you're not forgetting your past. It's part of that idea. This is, this is where you came from. So like the, the house across the street, that was a boarding house. Many of these were on this block, but that was a boarding house where the family would live there. And then during the winter months, the sheep herders would come to town and it would swell up to maybe 20 people. This is the dining room kind of where everyone sat down at the same time for breakfast, same time for lunch and same time for dinner. Usually 20 plus people. The Ubraga family, their family of five staying here, and as many as 15 to 20 more people living in this house. And this is the only toilet in the building that wasn't put in until 1935. Here were sheep herders or boarders. Mo I would say most often it was two to a bed. Yeah, you're not necessarily going to know them, but at the same time, they're not spending a lot of time up here. All these boarders are here for the few months in the winter. When they go back to work as sheep herders, they didn't necessarily take everything with them. So they left their trunks here with all their belongings, you know, maybe their Sunday clothes or whatever here. They don't need them out in the middle of the desert or in the mountains. So the general hope for most of them was to come to the United States, work for a few years, make a bunch of money and return home. I think once they got here, realized that they weren't working the whole year, so they weren't making money that whole time. So then they had to you know, use that winter time to try not to spend too much. And so they just constantly like, have to work a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Some would return, but for the most part, they ended up meeting someone here, having a family here, and kind of just making their life here. Oh God, I pushed it up. This is still very popular in Basque country. You play with the hand. So you actually you cover with a special tape here in the hand and it becomes so, so strong and calloused. So, so you hit the, the ball like this with your bare hand. And it's a very strong ball. When the ball hits the, the hand, you yeah. hear the So this is actually, originally was the biggest boarding house in Boise. But when they built this, they wanted to build something the boarders could do or participate in uh, that, didn't, that wouldn't cost a lot of money. So they built this court when they were building the whole building. There's a couple versions of the game that you could see here in Boise. One being handball or escupilota, where they're using their hand to hit the ball. They're just hitting it with their bare hands.
and it's quite a large space that they're playing on, so they have to hit, hit that ball pretty hard. It's a pretty painful sport to participate in, from what I understand. Then the other version is a pala or pilota. They use a wooden paddle and typically a rubber ball. Once a week, and we used to come here and play pala in the morning. Three of my grandparents and my fourth grandpa, he, his parents came. My grandpa, my best grandpa was a sheep herder. He actually really liked it, which is kind of weird. He said it was like one of the best parts of his life. I don't know. He liked sheep herding for some reason. So you spend long parts of your day alone? Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Do you like that? You can't run a very good sheep outfit by uh, uh, sitting there uh, with my feet up in a chair on Sunday or... Uh, and... Uh, oh. You know, that's... Uh, this is a pretty nice church out here. It is. Look at this. If you can't appreciate this, you're something wrong with your head. You know? This is beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks don't, wouldn't like it, especially the modern, the modern culture, you might say. It's uh, more into uh, this fast, um, I don't know, just different. But now, I got a sheep camp right here close. Uh, I hope he's, I hope, yep, he's here. This is Doggy. He's coming to see me. Fun. Caballo. My sheep herders are from Peru, and this is an opportunity for them to come here and, and better their lives. They're here, it's a, quite a sacrifice. Buenos dias, Alipio. Puede bajar, es más fácil para las cosas. Hay jabón y este es pesado. Ok. Yo traigo de puerco aquí, Alipio. ¿Tú hablas con el vecino? Sí. ¿Qué dice? Ahí está frío para arriba. Pero eh, no hay peligro. No, pero él no va rápido, pues va. Y bueno, dígale. Tú para pasar y después es libre por él, pero no mezcla. No. ¿Usted vuelve cada día aquí sí. a comer, a dormir? ¿Mediodía también o...? Sí, mediodía también. Y en la noche, me voy a dormir. Ah. Aquí está la cama. ¿Está cómoda? Sí. Cómoda sí. Aquí. Está ahí. Sí, una sí. Cosa. Una neta. Una neta. <risa> y hay que ir las cosas como una cocina normal sí normal y aquí tengo las revistas para entretenerse el día pero hay días que es corto el día mm. te lavas la ropa vas a ver las ovejas mm -hmm. cortar madera y para, para que las cosas se queden frías ¿Dónde las pones? No, ahí afuera está un chiquito cooler. Un cooler. Ah, está afuera. Sí, ahí. Ah, bueno. Hielo y ya. Yeah. Sí, sí. Y cocinando con propane. Sí, sí. ¿Quieres leña? También tienes. Esta es una cocina con leña. ¿Recoge usted? De ahí las maderas, sí. ¿Trabajaba usted en, así en Perú o en algo parecido? Sí, pero trabajaba en ganadería, igual. ¿Igual? Sí, desde pequeño. Me acostumbré de bonita forma de cuidar los animales. Sí, es bonito el paisaje. Espagueti, leche, queso, top rum. Okay. Es todo. Ok, jueves en la mañana yo pongo al campo aquí. Ya está bien. Ok. Ya. Yeah. ¿Y estar solo en el paisaje cómo es? No, no, no está solo, sino... No, el paisaje es bonito aquí. No, mucha sí. contaminación, no ruido, no cero de estrés. Sí. ¿Te cansa no. moverte tanto? No, no. Da gusto. 
vas mirando nuevos paisajes. So that's the sheep thing. My grandfather, the, the one in the picture there, he, he did that for about eight years. And then when the United States joined the war to go fight Hitler, he enlisted. He would rather go to war than uh, be out there with the sheep. I think it was lonely. Yeah. Most of the sheep herders around here are from Peru and Chile now. They, I think, are doing the same thing that the Bass did. They're willing to do that job without knowing the language. It's better pay, it's better, you know, they're, they're trying to do that same thing. Most of the Basques have just moved on to different jobs. Are you still teaching? <laughs> I am still teaching, yes. Yeah. I would say it's close enough in our history, and there are enough of us that have grandparents that did that, and it wasn't an option, it wasn't a choice, it was, that was it. It's enough of in our history that it's still important. There are no more Basque sheep outfits. I'm about it. Oh, we're all getting older. You've got to be, like my wife says, you've got to be raised into this or uh, to accept it. And I, I grew up here in this. This was, I was when I was a little boy. This is our shipping corral here. Did you help build it? Yep, absolutely. 1977. Huh. The ground was so damn hard. It was a drought. And the ground was so damn hard. We, when we pulled out the postal digger, it's a drill that makes the holes to drill the, yeah. it would smoke. You'd spit on it and, it, and your spit would sizzle. <laughs> when this way of life is over for me, there's not gonna be, I doubt if there's gonna be anybody behind me here. Really? Yeah, because this is, uh, it is a different way of life or way of existence. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, you do what you gotta do. Yeah. People don't wanna do that anymore. This is where we ship the lambs from. See, we run them through here. They run right here and then we sort them yeah. on this cutting gate. I've been doing this for 40, 42 years myself and before then my dad, my dad was in this spot in the 50s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't go down here to uh, Boise or Salt Lake City and say, hey, I waited somebody here to take over my outfit and they go, oh, I'll try it. No, that, that doesn't work. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, it's too hard. We have become a complacent. We're kind of spoiled. I had a good friend. He's passed away now, old timer. And my father also felt the same way, but they said, this country should have a depression about once every 10 years to make people appreciate what we've got and, and don't take it for granted and have to work for things and not have them given to you. Now don't get scared here. I go up here because it's easier than going down below. But I know where to make the turn. Because, okay, we got her made. See, he'll go in there. That's where I'm gonna take his camp on about Sunday, up in that, in that area straight away, as far away as you see. Yeah. Over there. It yeah. takes me half a, half a day to get it over there. Okay. Now we're on the highway again. <laughs> on the sidewalk, they added these granite pieces that have Basque songs. And this one's about specifically this tree in Guernica. That's where a lot of the kings and royalty would meet in the Basque government, under an oak tree. And the tree in this front yard is a sapling from the original Guernica tree in the Basque country. Now the tree of Guernica also kind of stands for perseverance and endurance of the Basques as well. This tree, it was donated to the museum, I think it was 1986. It's done very, very well here. There were some of those Basque fellows back when they came, the big migration back in the early 1900s. They knew this, you know, they talk over there and they say, well, you could go to America, but it, it, you, gotta, you gotta work hard, mm -hmm. but you can make good money. Mm -hmm. So they said, I'm going, I'm getting out of here. And so they came here to herd sheep, but they're long removed from this. Most of those 
Basque people in Boise. They're long removed from this. But I'll tell you this, the Basque people have made quite a contribution though to the, the west and the state of Idaho. That's all our country there. What we put together, two lifetimes. Everything you see, I'm very proud of that. And I, it'll all be forgotten one day, but that's just the way it is. You can't worry about that either. You served me well. Thank you very much. Hasta la vista.